Well, we've got the um, got the break going on here. This is Stewart. Normally in straight pool, whoever wins the lag will have the opponent uh, break. Uh, I don't know how much Stewart really knows about playing straight pool as far as the the game goes. But uh, Jason must have won the lag because Stewart is breaking. Just clipping the five, one, two rails around. Stewart uh, came up straighter on that ball, uh, starting off with than the normal straight pool break. Normally people go a little bit uh, farther out. The five ball uh, leaked out. I liked uh, Jason's practice. Uh, he didn't have any of the balls leak out at all. And Jason thundered that ball in from 10 miles away. Not really a big fan of pool players uh, using headphones, but, you know, do as they do. Secondary break shot, or the break shot here, just flower them out, and Jason Shaw is off to the races. This is the 2013 Derby City Classic Straight Pool Challenge brought to you by Diamond Billiards, Stu Matana, Rich Klein, and Simona's Cloth. First round of the final single elimination tournament of the top eight. The top eight were the ones who qualified with high runs. They had 12 tries to get a high run. The highest run was Stuart Petman, the number one seed. Stuart was sitting right now off the screen. The number eight seed, Jason Shaw, just qualified in having a... Uh, Qualify playoff, I guess, off uh, against Adam Smith. Jason's pretty impressive uh, ball maker here. Uh, in the last couple of uh, streams I've seen him, he is. Uh, very, very impressive, and you know, I think he's one of the future superstars. Starting to get down in balls here. Is, uh, I don't really see a good break ball. I suppose the six ball, if you had to, um, and there's not enough balls to manufacture. Also, the f the ball on the left. I think that's the ten ball. Might be, but he's shooting it right now, so that's not what he's going to use. We've seen some funny non-traditional uh, patterns and breakouts. He's going fast. He's not thinking too much about it. I think the six ball might be his break ball. Key ball might be the 10 or 12 ball, ball uh, 10 ball sitting in the center of the table. I think he's going to shoot the 12 first, then the 13, and then the 10 and uh, break with the six. He under hit the ball. I'm sure he wanted to have the 13 in the side pocket. Uh, instead, he's gonna have to shoot in the corner and follow forward. Uh, I guess he's got enough angle to just clip this in the side and slide over, but no, it's not the first time. Where the cue ball is right now wouldn't be a bad angle. And he's going to have to draw back. And this is the concern because the table is so big. He's a, as a left-hander, he's coming to the wrong side of the table for him. Bounce one rail, and he's come up a little. Well, I'm saying a little flat. Normally, um, want a little more angle on this, or else he's going to have to really hit this pretty firm. He's going to be stretched out. So, tough shot. The mistake uh, that Stewart made, um, he, he, I think he was too close to the center of the table when he had his break. The five ball came straight out of the pack into an open shot. Jason thundered the ball in, came up with a nice secondary break shot and flowered him out. Ran 14. Hit him pretty hard and very rewarded. The balls are wide open. 
I expect it to be 28 nothing in about 38 seconds. Really not too much of a problem here. Straight play, you want to get rid of balls that are blocking the corner, so the four ball should be coming out of there very soon. Uh, I'm surprised he doesn't just go ahead and shoot that now. And then the eight ball will probably be uh, another ball that he's got to take care of. The eight ball and the four ball are probably the two biggest uh, obstacles, and once those are out, no problems for us in the, uh, the rack as far as regular straight pool goes. The problem, of course, is the 10-foot table it makes things tougher. He nudged that five ball, so now he's got two break balls, the 15 and the five, either one. He really needs to be take, take a look at that eight ball at some point, because, uh, I don't know, the, the 14 passes, so the four ball is the only ball that's a, a, a problem. Good decision there, rather than try to make that five ball, which was entirely too much of a stretch for him. pattern players out there will start looking at where your your break ball is and your key ball and especially right now once the floor ball is out he's going to pick them all in a specific order don't hit that 15 this kid is a shot maker extreme I certainly like taking that ball off the rail as of right now that's the only trouble ball or that is the one trouble ball is that the same thing my goodness this kid plays fast well question out there in the stream is where's John Schmidt and uh, yeah Heather Absolutely correct. The world champion John Schmidt is in California. I think he's riding his bikes. I'd say this is a funny spot for Jason because he's left the two break balls as the last two balls. So I guess he has his choice of which one he wants to go for best. As a left-hander, uh, you probably shoot the five ball as your break ball. But now he's put the ball in the funky spot. He put it in the triangle. Believe it or not, he's put this in a very odd spot. He could draw the 15 ball straight back to where he's at, or draw the 5 ball straight back to where he's at. Both give him a more difficult break shot than he could have had. The, the, the error, if you want to call it that, was that he didn't commit to a key shot. He used both break balls as the key shot, and, and he got absolutely... Um, pitiful on the break and really it was because for one odd reason or another he had both ball, break balls as his last ball you must have a break ball and a key ball to get to the break ball and uh, that's a uh, straight pool snafu there I don't want to sound too critical of him because obviously he's a, he's a monster player and uh, plays a million times better than I do but um, you know, pattern play in straight pool is how you get your long runs And this is especially bad for him because as a left-hander, he really has no chance at, at, at reaching this, I think. I think he's going to have to get the rake out just to hit this ball. Oh, he's way out there. He's going behind his back, stretched out just to make this ball. Two three rails round. Oh, he just missed the clip. What a fantastic straight pull shot. That is standard straight pull, uh, ladies and gentlemen. You'll see that every day at any pool hall. Wow, are you kidding me? I love the shot. I love the shot. And uh, he, he went with a uh, what looks to be a standard um, 
straight pull break because you are not required to shoot it like that in a, in a, in a safety uh, I find it kind of odd that he would use a, that kind of safety he could have just gone into the stack and gotten another ball out of the stack into the cushion uh, instead he elected to play a, a uh, opening break style safety it's not horrific but not normally when you don't have to uh, you, you, there were no requirements uh, for that if you get what I mean. I'm still shocked. Uh, <laughs> I'm shocked at the last few shots there from Jason Shaw. <laughs> a lot of people would actually stare at the, st uh, the stack here to see if there's a uh, frozen wired, wired pair. It is interesting that because I don't believe that Jason Shaw is a straight pool player as a, either, and I do wonder if right now they're thinking, what do I do next? Because it's no longer a run and gun rack. He decided to run and gun, but it's safe. It's safe. And Stewart, who we saw as just a ball-making machine, must really be wondering what's going on. Both these guys have no problem making balls on this table. I'm thinking, uh, you know, if he's a... Well, it looks like Stewart has taken an intentional, maybe two rails into the stack. Because in snooker, you just have to touch the balls. Oh, that was quite a quite an attempt. I would call that the Irving Crane attempt. So maybe he has done some scrolling. Two rails in, slip. He's at minus one. He's at minus one. It's a scratch. In the games where there are points. Wait, 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 what's he doing? That's a, oh my goodness gracious. He just asked. Ugh. All right, so uh, this is uh, odd. Jason had asked if that was a foul or, or whatever, and, and Dennis had told him it was a scratch. You see, there's a difference between fouls and scratches anyway, but uh, we'll get into that afterward. Jason actually moved the ball. Now, if Dennis is an acting referee, Dennis should be able to move that ball back to where it was. In fact, uh, that was a goofy. <laughs> uh, I've actually, I've never seen this before. <laughs> I think Dennis should move that ball back. Um, all right, so uh, Stewart is on minus one, uh, and, and he's off the foul. Dennis will mark that as off the foul, I guess. And right now we're just, uh, wow. We're just, now I'm really stunned with Jason. Jason's still laughing about it. Jason's still laughing about it. He tried to take ball in hand behind the kitchen, but um, you don't do that on, on scratches. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, this is lovely. Two guys who really don't play straight pool are, are, are playing. Now, oh, here we go. Jason Shaw sees something in the stack. Hold on to your hats, folks. Kapow coming up and it missed by a good margin and uh, here comes Stewart here comes Stewart I, I do believe that at the very least it should have been ball in hand uh, behind the line for uh, for Stewart it was wow I mean if these guys weren't friendly that may have been a loss of game because that was a serious penalty. <laughs> okay, so both of them are off their scratches, but uh, I um, oh, I, I'll be right back. I'll be right back. 
No, I'm not going to be right back. I got nothing to do with this. You know, when Jason uh, took his ball, uh, that was a foul, and he owed a ball. He should be at 20. He should be at 27. And uh, a ball should should have spot up. And hopefully... Yeah, Heather, you're, I think you're exactly right. Uh, and, of course, it's no longer minus one, but the count is going to be goofy. Uh, Stewart had a foul, but he's already made balls here. Oh, I'm sorry. You're, you're, he had 29. 20, did they spot up a ball? That's right. He made a ball, so he had 29, and a ball should have spot up, and I didn't see a ball come up. Maybe it did. Maybe it did. Too much math. That's right. I have to be able to add 1 plus 1. 1 plus 1 equals 28 here at the... Uh, I'm sorry, 1 plus 1 equals 42, no, 28. 28. I was right the first time. <laughs> well, you know, when you're watching a straight pull match and a guy goes behind the back and goes three rails out of the corner, two rails out of the corner to try to clip the corner ball, and then picks up a hand, uh, picks up a ball trying for a ball in hand uh, on a scratch and not a foul, um, I just don't know. I can only hope that I actually did hit the record button. It seems like this thing is recording, but I can't tell. Uh, I am just too non-stream tech savvy. And uh, I, I may have uh, done exactly the opposite and hit the non-record button, and that would just... That's where I'm really hitting myself here. So, he is a... Uh, Jason is on 28. Uh, Stewart is going to get through these, and Stewart will have uh, 13 when he's done. <laughs> I think. It shouldn't be. There should be a ball down. Stewart should have 13 minus 1, 12. He gets... Well, uh, you know, Dennis is uh, a seasoned veteran at this game, so we'll see what he comes up with. No, I guess it should be 14, 13, not 12. Well, he's got it, 12. He's got it. I'm, I'm the only person that doesn't know what's going on, I think. If the ball spotted, but he had a foul... If the ball spotted, he should have 13. But the ball... <laughs> that was just crazy. When he picked the cue ball. Right, and then the foul... When they picked the cue ball... That was the foul. That was the foul, but he needed to spot a ball. Oh, or did he just oh, he take it off? Spot, he never spotted it. Unless you make it. Unless you make it, that's right. All right. He didn't spot his ball. On the score. That's why they just got a foul. All right, so he didn't have to spot a ball. Okay. He just took it off his points. All right. Oh, he, yeah, that's right. He didn't foul. And sp he didn't make a ball on that. Right. Right. The, the, the whole sequence just completely threw me for a loop. <laughs> oh goodness. <laughs> All right, that's right. He didn't. You didn't. You, he didn't. That's right. He didn't have to spot a ball. I don't know what I was thinking. I think I just got so thrown for a loop by the whole, the whole thing. The behind the back, breakout, the grabbing the cue ball in hand. My goodness. My goodness. Twenty-eight to twelve. Which at some point I th I thought it was, and then I didn't think it was, and then here goes the calculus in my head. All right. That's right. So thank you for uh, Bill Moropoulos who straightened me out. I couldn't tell what game we were playing, you know, just, and I think people can understand why. My goodness. Dennis and Bill have it all straight, and I'll just sit here and avoid the clowns. <laughs> that, so Dennis is, uh, Dennis is keeping the real score and then just using the, uh, the blue and blue and red markers just for us on the stream. Just for us as you know. Ah, that's true. We're only going to go into 100, so two digits is good. 
It is very cold here in Louisville. It's 28 degrees when I uh, got up, and I was uh, I was shocked to see these white little insects uh, just fluttering around, hitting my windshield. I didn't know what it was, but when I hit them, they bled clear, clear liquid, and turned into clear liquid. I don't know what they were, but uh, hopefully they'll disappear. Meanwhile, back to the straight pool match. I guess that's this is a straight pool match. 14 and one, 2013 straight pool match. Challenge match. A straight pool challenge. This is, uh, we are now in the uh, eight man single elimination tournament. Our sponsors are Diamond Billiards, SJM Stumatana, Rich Klein, and Simona's Cloth. This is Freddie Agner, the corner man, completely dumbfounded. But that's standard operating procedure for me. Stuart Petman, the number one seed, is uh, running the balls right now. He's down, as you can see, he's the red scorer up there, but he's on his second rack. Jason Shaw is the number eight seed, his opponent. Jason uh, came through with two quick racks, uh, but came up bad in the uh, breakout ball. Tried to Bustamante it behind his back and then Efren it two rails around into the corner. So he tried a Busty and Efren shot all at the same time. You know, and that's what happens in straight pool, apparently. This is a 10-foot table, in case people don't, uh, people are new to this stream. Stuart Petman is from the UK. Actually, he's from Thailand, and uh, via the UK. Everything's a strange reason at this point. But I would be clearing out these balls. And he, there he goes. Such a straight shooter. Both these guys. Both these guys. So if anybody has never played straight pool out there before, you, you may not want to take notes here. Just watch and, and, and uh, enjoy. Because a lot of the patterns uh, both these guys have used aren't in the book. Clearing out the balls up table, which isn't a bad idea. 
He's looking for a rest. Since both these guys are, uh, you know, English, I'll, I'll, I'll try to use the uh, British term. He's going to pot the ball, six ball, the green ball. Pot the green with the white in the upper right corner. Screw back off the cushion. Past the center. One of these balls must be wired, 12-13, because he's kept on that side of the table. Give it a call. You've got to call the ball. There you go. There you go. Good job. 13 ball in the corner pocket. And very nicely done, but the balls really haven't broken out uh, unless the f unless he likes the five ball. The five ball does go up table. The 12 ball goes up table. Uh, and 12 might actually pass the five. Oddly enough, he's looking at his break ball. The nine ball is his next shot. I'm calling it the break ball, but Stewart has all kinds of different plans of what's a break ball, what's not. And uh, he has an insurance ball, the 14. Kwaka. The question is, uh, if the guy ball moves a ball with his, uh, his hand, is it minus 15? I would have said that uh, something like that. I thought that moving a ball with your with your hand, he, Jason Chow earlier grabbed the cue ball and moved it, thinking that he had ball in hand in the kitchen. Um, ball in hand in Bach for you English uh, folks. Uh, I would have thought that was a major uh, foul and 15 points or a loss of game, but this is all good fun. I don't know what the... If this was somebody else playing, there might have been more of an argument. Both of them were laughing about it, and uh, we move forward. We move forward. Uh, it's too bad that Marty isn't on right now, because I'm sure he'd have enough to say about this. Stewart's going to screw this back a little bit. And leave us with a fairly flat break. You'd like to have that cue ball with more cut angle, so they use... The the, uh, the speed of the cue ball to break out the balls, but both these guys have been absolutely just punching these these uh, object balls in with a lot of authority. 40 to 28. Marty, Marty uh, Cosmo 8 is who I was talking about earlier when I said Marty, Marty Herman. Marty's been around the game for a long time, so I'm sure he's seen it all and, uh, and uh, should know what to do in that situation. Jason is from Scotland. Yeah, Quaka. That's uh, that's why I was uh, saying that, it, that I would consider picking up the cue ball as a serious foul, and therefore loss of rack, game or set. It certainly, if it was, if this was Dallas West out there, for example, uh, and not to pick on Dallas, but I'm just using him as the example of an old school straight pool player who knows the rules and will stick to the rules. I'm sure he would say that was loss of game or a serious foul or whatever the rules would be, and he'd be right. <laughs> In this case, though, we got two guys that really don't play straight pool, and uh, hey, I'm, I'm willing to forget, give, forgive. They're having a good time. Meanwhile, Stewart is uh, calmly gone into his uh, next rack, his fourth rack. He's on a run of, I guess he's on a run of 41 plus. He's got to get there. That's a pretty nice shot. Stun that with just a hair of inside and let that cue ball dance around. A little secondary breakout action here. The big flower shot. Oh, the balls didn't do it. The lawyer's tool. The, the pendulum toy. He hit it pretty hard, but only one ball at the other end of the stack came flying out. I don't understand why he's shaking his head. Uh, you know, he's fired everything else in. <laughs> Calling the 15. Mm, 
Okay, so there's a foul, and that ball's got a spot up. I got that one right for once. Here goes Dennis, spotting it up. There it is. It's a nice run, but uh, there wasn't a shot there, and the, pr the correct shot was a safety. Got a duck. Lawyer's tool. <laughs> the lawyer's tool was the uh, <laughs> that little pendulum game thing uh, that you, you paperweight. <laughs> I don't know what they call it. Now Jason Shaw has ball in hand in Bach in the kitchen. He's going to ask Dennis if this ball is behind the line. Can he shoot this ball? So now he's asking, is it behind the line? Is it out of the line? As long as I've been playing this game, I still don't know what the rule is. Because it's, you know, depending on tournament or, or the rule set, you know, does the ball have to be fully behind the line, totally behind the line, on the line, center of the ball? base of the ball, not touching the line, you know, and I'm sure you all have your firm opinions on it. I have no opinion. If the tournament director says I can't hit it, I won't hit it. Firing at the 11, this table must be that easy. Oh, and he got jiggy with it. Look at that. Only two balls moved. You got it right. Off to the races now. No good break ball, but I'm sure he, the five uh, or the three will be in a second. I think you go ahead and play this 15, get an angle on the three ball in the side pocket, and just nudge the five over for a break ball. You wouldn't do it now. Well, there goes that. Get the angle on the three ball in the side pocket and nudge the five for the break ball. Just a little tickle. Just a little kiss. Also go pretty slow. I said pretty slow, but he... Wait, why didn't he just hit the... Oh, well, he missed it. Well, that was unexpected. And uh, Dennis... I guess Dennis is just going to uh, update the scores at the end. Unfortunately for Jason, he's manufactured the break ball for Stewart. Clayton Rocha. This is Freddie Agnier. How are you doing, my friend? Clayton and I played each other many years ago in uh, New England Billiard League uh, Best of the Best Tournament in Springfield, Massachusetts. Oh, no, no, we were in Connecticut. Clayton beat me. Beat me in the finals of the uh, winners and the f finals of the finals. Meanwhile, back at the table, uh, Stewart is back because Jason missed that ball in the side pocket uh, when he was manufacturing break ball. And Stewart likes these flat breaks. All kinds of motion. Update the score here. 50 to 31, Stuart Petman leading Jason Shaw. This is the Derby City Classic 2013 Straight Pool Challenge. Brought to you by Diamond Billiards, Stu Matana, Rich Klein, and Simona's Cloth. We had qualifying all week long. Each player that uh, bought in had 12 tries to get a high run. The high run, uh, the eight top eight are left on a single elimination tournament. Number one seed was Stuart Petman, who had the only 100-ball run. In fact, he had two 
100 ball runs, a 100 and 117. The number eight seed, Jason Shaw, got in with a, in a uh, single, single elimination type of uh, playoff with Adam Smith. I guess they were both tied. And uh, Jason Shaw got a 58 in his uh, two attempts that he got for the playoff. And Adam Smith had got a 52, so that's why Jason is here as the number eight seed playing Stuart Petman. This is a 10-foot table. Uh, the 117 was the highest recorded run. The highest recorded run on a 10-foot table. So, I believe that somebody else may have gotten a 90. Maybe Nils Fine got a 90. Well, back to straight pool commentary here. The four stripes in the middle uh, are sort of a little problem. None of them are really good brick balls, so here comes the manufacturing. The 13 now is a good brick ball, but the 9 uh, looks like it's right in the way. So if we can negotiate getting the 9 out, um, then that's the rest of the rack. I think that I think that uh, you know this type of game will, will certainly showcase players like Stewart and Jason um, being used to the big tables. So the patterns, probably the patterns and the movement of the cue ball is more in line with their type of game uh, than the the American pool playing pool players. American pool being the term, not being American. I don't know why I have to keep on saying that, but. American pool versus British eight ball versus Australian rules football. That's what I'm talking about. The nine ball go does go, so this uh, rack should be all done here in a few seconds, barring any unforeseen crazy errors. Stewart sh shoots so straight. And I, I don't know if Dennis is considered the uh, referee here or the scorekeeper. I would expect that he's the referee, but no one said. Standard nine ball shot there, and, and he dogged it, which is very strange. You know, you haven't seen uh, Stuart dog anything, and he dogged that one. And he broke the break ball out, so the next break is going to be funky. This is one of my, my kind of break shots here, the one I always end up with and always miss because I'm a terrible straight pool player. For those of you just joining, this is the 2013 Straight Pool Challenge. We are in the tournament section, the, the single elimination tournament. Straight Pool Challenge is on the 10-foot tables, the Bigfoot Challenge tables that we're going to be doing the 10-ball challenge later on. The event is sponsored by Diamond Billiards, Stu Matana, Rich Klein, and Simona's Cloth. The high run of this uh, week to, for qualifying was 117 by Stuart Petman, who uh, is in the blue, just sitting down. Jason Shaw's the number eight seed. Jason's got the headphones on, black shirt, left-hander. And of course, he just sliced that break ball in. It tickled, tickled the points, but he's in. Blasting into the stack, not getting any kind of nice rewards, I don't believe. I don't see any head shaking, so he doesn't mind this. Wow. <laughs> Into the side pocket. That was just another, yet another phenomenal shot. Somebody just uh, 
called over the, the uh, PA system timeout. Now that sounds odd. No head shaking, that's right, or else his headphones will fall right off. If headphones fall off, and they fall in the ball. It's a foul, cue ball fouls. Uh, all, all f ball fouls, I think we're playing. And that was another funky style of breakout shot, drawing into the pack like that. That's, uh, you see that in the snooker games that I've seen in Europe over and over again, but not so much in straight pool. It works. Gotta make a break ball here. He tried to, but he's really hit that way too hard as he points over there. And now, he's run out of balls. He's starting to run out of balls. Jason has surprised me before, but I think his, it's going to be awfully tough for him to continue a run here unless uh, he can probably get some, some kind of, maybe the eight ball is good. The eight ball is low. Yes, yeah, so that's below the, the rack area, so maybe he'll use that as the breakout, but um, another crazy funky one, I think. So Jason is a left-handed shooter, but a right-handed, uh, uh, he plays right-handed when he's playing with the rake, with the rest. Kind of like Mike Siegel and the great Steve Miserak. He was trying to tickle the, the deuce there, but he didn't. And um, I suspect he shoots the two next because one of these two balls is going to be his break ball. So he's chosen to play the ball in the side pocket, as uh, the, some of the streamers had said, as his break ball. And if he does get on that side, going to be yet another fantastic break shot not normally in the book this is, looks to be perfect absolutely perfect that's absolutely perfect you can't get, get better than that it is 12:51 p.m. In Louisville, Kentucky, or the Louisville, Kentucky area, we are at the Horseshoe Casino in southern Indiana, just over the river. Just over the river in Elizabeth, Elizabeth Town, Elizabeth, Casinoville. Here comes the break. I'd like to hit the top two balls, which he did. He executed perfectly. This is the straight pool single elimination tournament part of the straight pool challenge. Number one seed versus the number eight seed. This is the number eight seed, Jason Shaw, for those of you just joining. He's playing Stuart Petman, the number one seed. Stuart leads 62 to 47, as you can see in the scores above. Jason is from Scotland. Stuart is from Thailand, but he is from the UK originally.
Well, the nine ball matches, uh, when will they show them? I'm, I'm not sure because uh, we're only on the 10 foot table, so in general you'll only see uh, 10 ball and uh, straight pool on here. Uh, but we have been streaming some of the tournament floor. And uh, the nine ball tournament has started, but they're still finishing up the one pocket. So you might see some uh, nine ball tomorrow. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe tonight, if uh, rather than dead time. But there is a lot of action going to happen on these 10 foot tables, I think. I'm not sure that 10 ball, 10 ball hasn't started yet today. I think 2 p.m. is the uh, 10 ball start. Jason's got uh, a great rack here. 14 is a good break ball. He needs to get he could, the 6 ball or the uh, 9 ball could be his, his key ball. I think he overdrew this ball because I think he wants the one ball next. Oh, he's perfect. He's good. Pattern might be the one, then the nine, the seven. The six is the last ball if he likes that. But he just bumped that ball, so now he's going to change a bit. If he's straight, he'll uh, snatch this back by a couple of inches. Maybe a couple of feet. A couple of inches. If he's straight enough on the six, he'll shoot the six and snatch back as well, or bounce off the rail. Looks perfect here. And he's also fighting for the flatter break shot. Both these guys have been going for the flatter break shot on the uh, standard break shot. As a left-hander, as a left-hander, Jason's going to have a tough time on this, uh, just from the stretch and reach point of view. And he's already grabbing the rake or the rest or the bridge. Right-handed bridging, though. Straightforward, clip 13 ball or the 15 ball. He hit it pretty firm. Nice job. He's got a shot. 11 ball. And he's looking at the six ball as a, a secondary breakout, I guess. Now, if he's uh, got an angle, he'll probably draw into these balls, as has been the normal move. But if he doesn't have an angle, oh, he tried to draw on the balls and missed the pack. Disaster. Disaster. Just put the concentration into making this. He's such a straight stroker. And it goes. It's going to bump the 10 to keep it clean. No. But he's on the 13. Six ball still available for him for the secondary breakout, and I think he'll probably shoot it. Why not? No, I'm wrong again. All the balls go, so the five ball could go. Yeah, the five goes. Instead of just smashing away, I think he should be thinking about manufacturing a break ball and have the one ball as your as your insurance, and that's exactly what he did. Nice job. Nice job. I say nice job, and I don't know if anything goes, but... He is shaking his head because it uh, doesn't look like those balls go, so if he can punch this out and play the four ball in the side pocket, which was the similar shot that he missed last time, he can shake the trees here, the, the three clinging berries. <laughs> he shook one out, uh, and the 15 still is a little bit of a problem. 15, 12 are still a little bit of a problem. It goes if he gets below keeps it clean of the six, but you certainly don't want to flirt with the six. It's already a perfect break ball. 
So you expect them to go to the rail, one rail out, or just uh, slide it up, shooting 15 in the corner pocket. Oh, the ball goes, so since the ball went in the side pocket, no need. He wants to hoe the ball, but I don't think so. This is better. I think keeping it here is much better. Jiggy. Okay, it goes in. Nice rack, indeed. He's taking the lead here, and Jason might run this set out from here. Which would be uh, pretty amazing, considering Stewart is the number one seed and really was the one that uh, looked like he could run away with this. There's Jay Helford coming over here. I think he's just going to turn the corner and say hello to me. We've got 10 ball matches coming up. So, hello, Mr. Jay. You're going to get Shane and Niels here. Shane it's and Niels. It's going to be delayed. Okay. Because Shane's behind in the schedule. You're going to get that match in here. Excellent. Probably you're looking at around three, not two. All right, thanks. Shane and Neil uh, will be our match uh, on the 10 ball, but uh, Shane is in the match right now, so we're probably thinking closer to 3 o'clock for those of you out there, so moderators keep that in mind. 3 p.m. for the Shane and Neil's match for the 10 ball. Shane is still playing. Now, unfortunately, I looked away as I talked to Jay, and I see Stuart up. So I missed what happened. Jason was at 75. There goes Jaybird, Tupe J. Helfert. If you guys don't know, he just walked by the black shirt. Let's see if uh, you know it's at at 38. This this could be uh, this could be it. Okay, thank you. So he uh, Jason pounded the break ball and uh, must have missed it. Hopefully, we can see that later on. Stuart needs to figure out how to break these, uh, this rest of the balls out here. And he looked at the 13. I don't know if he can get to that 13 right now. One more nudge. The Fourteen looks decent, but not great. So I think he was actually trying to make the twelve ball, twelve ball, as his break ball. Yeah, because he's pointing like that. That's what he wants to do. I lost my chat. Uh, he solved this one nicely and he's going to be shooting the tw 12 ball or 10 ball as his uh, break ball. Well, 114, uh, 111 then the 14. Oh, is this, okay, he's turning around having the one ball as his, uh, as his key ball. As soon as they say that, he may just turn around and have the 14 as his key ball. Either way. I 
This is Straight Pool 14 and 1. For those new to the game, it's a game that they played in the movie The Hustler with Jackie Gleason and Paul Newman. It's also the game that made uh, William Moscone famous. Multi, 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 multi world champion. He needs this to go. He has an angle, but barely anything. It's very, very flat here. Very flat. This is the Derby City Classic 2013 Straight Pool Challenge. This is the single elimination tournament. Sponsored by Diamond Billiards and Stu Matana, Rich Klein, and Samoa's Cloth. My name is Freddie Agner. I'm the corner man on the Internet Billiards streams and forums. Uh, I'm also the author of the Kingmaker's Corner for Inside Pool Magazine. Stuart Petman is the number one seed. He had 117 on the preliminary qualifying high run event. 117, he was the only one with 100 ball runs, 100 ball breaks. He had a 117 and a 100. I guess he's going to smash this one too, right into the 9 or the 15. And draw it out. I think drawing it out was a really great idea. And on the flat uh, breakouts like that, you will see people draw to the center of the table. He drew this all the way back. And by doing so, he's got a shot and an opportunity for secondary breakouts and tickles. Dennis is doing some texting, so he might get fired. No, just kidding. <laughs> He's on Facebook. Secondary breakout here, right off the top ball, the 11 ball. He's going to have to have another secondary breakout. I guess that'd be a tertiary breakout. Stewart is taking back the lead here, as you can see, and uh, he started at around 62, 65, somewhere in that range. Seven ball was his insurance ball. Very nicely done. I think uh, he can start picking off, picking off the, uh, the balls that are in the pack right now after he comes back with a nine ball and the ten ball. Maybe just the nine ball, nine ball to the four ball. Nine ball and ten ball. He needs to bump one of these balls at some point to make the break ball. All of them are in the in the rack. The fourteen might not be in the rack, but it's very close. You can barely see the lines. This should be good for the four ball, and he should be able to move every ball out of that rack, out of the uh, rack area. And surely one of them is going to be nice. He won't hit this. He won't hit this hard. As soon as they say that, he hit it hard. Well, sad news from the X Games. Uh, Caleb Moore, who had that horrific accident, as uh, people saw yesterday, he uh, he did pass away from the uh, from that accident uh, on the X X Games snowmobile uh, contest. And uh, our condolences to his family. So none of those balls uh, end up being his break ball, and he still decided to use the 14 as the break ball. It is, it's fairly close. I, I can just see now that there is a good amount of room there. There is a good amount of room. We were using the diamond rack, which is a much bigger rack than the uh, racks that uh, some of us grew up with. So the outline of the rack is uh, probably somewhere around half an inch bigger uh, away from the ball, from the, the, from the pack of balls. I have no idea. Okay, there he is. <laughs> I couldn't tell what he was doing. I guess he's just going to try to hold this ball, and he did. No worries, no worries. Stewart uh, might be 
on his last rack, if he can successfully break the balls and get a run, he should he should be. Oh, he's he's very close. He should be at he's at 90, 90, 75. He needs 10 balls here. This is the Straight Pool Challenge at the Derby City Classic 2013 edition. We are on the 10-foot tables for those of you uh, who might not realize that. So this is sponsored by Diamond Billiards, Stu Matana, Rich Klein, and Simona's Cloth. My name is Freddie Agner, the corner man. This is Stuart Petman, number one seed, versus Jason Shaw, the number eight seed. Winner moves on. The loser goes back to the rest of the tournament as this is single elimination. Punch this right off the top ball, the three ball. Very nice, very nice. I don't know if he actually has a shot, a uh, straight shot. He might have to play a combination. And from there, the 13 starts running away, so there isn't much there. So maybe he should look up tail because the three ball is available to him. The three ball is available, and I think he's got to shoot the three ball. Where is he going? Okay, he's playing the combination. Tricky here. I say he's playing the combination, but apparently the three, 13 ball went straight in because uh, I'm completely blind. I got hooked by the uh, by the angle again. He needs eight balls here. And there are one, two, th three in the open. He's going to go if he hits this and splats these balls out. This 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 match should be history. We're only going to 100, as you can tell. The scorecards can only go to 99. Well, the 15 ball seems to be his next ball, but it is starting to ride up. So he may be playing position up table. He could play the six, but I'm not sure that gets him anywhere. This is probably a better choice to thin the nine. Now that the six is insurance. Or the eight is insurance. He's way up table. I don't think he expected to miss that uh, pack so much, just like Jason had missed the pack earlier. No problem for uh, Stewart on those, at least those longer shots. He's five balls away here. I think if he just watches the scoreboard, he doesn't need to break those balls out. Uh, he can actually just play these last four to, uh, to win. The scorekeeper's name in the in the hustler. <laughs> See, he went for the break on. You really didn't didn't need to. He I, they're only going to 100, and he had five. Okay, playing for two. And see, Dennis reminds him he's playing for two because, well, he he must have asked. He must have asked if he'd asked him before, because that was a little that was a little uh, funky. He only needed the five. Playing for two. I suppose the seven ball, bounce one rail out. Might actually run into uh, Yeah, he ran into it. And guess the news. Guess the news. He hung the ball. Jason comes jumping out. That's a little bit... Uh, just a little bit sharked. I couldn't tell if he asked Dennis or if Dennis told him. Because right now, Stewart is on 98. And that 
Well, we've seen some funny things here, and I, I don't know if uh, for all of you who have not seen, we, we saw uh, Jason Shaw try to do a breakout going behind his back, uh, power following two rails, trying to clip the corner. We saw Jason Shaw pick up the cue ball after a scratch, a table scratch uh, from, I mean a scratch, not, not a table scratch, a scratch from uh, Stewart. And uh, now we see, uh, I think, I think Stewart didn't know where he was as far as the score was, or Dennis wanted to remind him what the score was because maybe he thought that Stewart didn't know. Uh, and then Stuart missed. Oh, and then, of course, when Stuart missed, Jason jumped out of the chair onto the table in exuberance. Oof. So again, this is the straight pool challenge. Jason Shaw, number eight seed, is playing. He's got he's to 81 now, so he's getting close. Um, he might run this one out with uh, Stewart sitting on sitting on the two hole. This is Freddie Agner, the corner man, coming at you from the Derby City Classic. And Jason is he's going to concede here, I think. He's still standing there. He just smashed that ball and missed and missed. playing for one and he doesn't have a shot 13 ball and that is your game Stuart Petman defeats Jason Shaw 100 to 81 in the first round of the eight man single elimination tournament of the Straight pool challenge here at the Derby City Classic on the 10 foot tables. This was sponsored by Diamond Billiards, Stu Matana, Rich Klein, and Simonis Cloth. Check out your sponsors. So, for Inside Pool Magazine, this is Freddie Agner, the corner man. Thank you everybody for watching. We just watched a great match, and uh, we will see you later. 3 p.m. will be Shane Van Boning and uh, Niels Fan for the 10 ball challenge. Thank you, everybody, and we'll see you next time right here on Inside Pool Magazine, InsidePool.tv.